So at the end of the day yesterday, uh, we got the battery up into the car, got all the bolts in, got them torqued. Um, now, the next thing, there's this bash plate. It's a big, thick aluminum uh, piece. goes on the front lip of the battery. And then after that, it's pretty much just uh, some plastic covers to put on under here. And then getting the car back down off of the jack stands. So this is up at the front of the car and this piece basically goes uh, between kind of this front plastic cover and the front of the battery. And it kind of protects the battery from um, any road debris or anything kind of hitting like the front lip of it. So it was hard to film while doing it, but I put back in this plastic cover uh, and these corner, these aluminum flanges. So when we took the battery out, um, these little screws here are so small and they're steel and they're going into aluminum. So they just get that corrosion from the difference in metals. And that's what I had to grind off was one of those screws. So right here, I actually had to grind off the back uh, of this, the threaded part, and then I retapped it. So that's a stainless steel bolt in place of one of those little guys. So the plastic cover, this goes over the electric motor, and then there's kind of like some fins and things to reinstall. That took a while, all the little bolts and push pins and everything. But the uh, back end of the car is all back together again. So we're most of the way there. Uh, mostly got to get the car back down off the uh, wood blocks. Now I built this cribbing as solid one foot tall sections, but because the air suspension wasn't working in the back, I had to add an extra six inches back there. Uh, what this really comes down to is uh, it was a lot of work to get the car back down off these wood blocks. On top of it, the passenger side was a little bit more tricky. There was just very little room to work over there. There's some cabinets attached to the wall. And keep in mind also that when I brought the car in, it wasn't working. I had to push it in with my lawnmower. Now, once we get the car down uh, with everything working, turning the car on, the air suspension should actually work the way it's supposed to again. So look at the front of the car and it automatically is dropping to match the back. We also checked with the tape measure and sure enough, the car was level. So I ran the air conditioner a little last night just to test out the new hose for drippage. I had to stick a bucket underneath because there is like a quart of condensate in here and all that water would have been running right down onto the battery pack without adding that additional hose. Now that the car is drivable under its own power, we could actually move it out of the garage, which was pretty exciting. Now I did have a couple of things in the driveway. I had to move around and shuffle the car a bit here. The other thing is when I bought the car, I knew there was a problem with the passenger window. It was broken, but at least it was broken in the up position. Now watch as my brother comes over and opens the passenger door. The window slides right down inside the door where we can't get it anymore. And it's been raining like crazy lately, which means I can't leave it like that. We have to put it back in the garage and fix this window. See that look on my face? That's me being really disappointed. And then backing the car into the garage, I noticed one more problem. Do you see it? Yeah, that left-hand taillight. So one more thing to have to fix. Now, fortunately, since we could now drive the car, we could back it in and make sure we had room to work, uh, in this case, by being able to open the passenger door and get to work on that window. 
Getting the door interior panel off wasn't actually too bad. It's like three bolts, but on the other side, there's a whole bunch of wires that have to be unplugged before taking the panel off. Then on the inside, oh, we've got the, the release cable and a whole bunch of other things that have to come off to get inside the door. But once we were in there, we could grab the glass, move it, uh, eventually pull it up and out of the way. We also needed to take out the speaker to see the one end of the window. The set of tracks and cables all together inside the door is what they call the window regulator. And right in the middle where we can't see it right now is where the electric motor is, but I could easily uh, reach my arm back in there and feel it. At this point, the window was completely off the track and we were able to just pull the glass right out. Here's your glass. Each track that holds the window is held in by two bolts. One is at the bottom. Uh, there's an access hole through the bottom of the door here. You gotta pull out a little plastic plug and stick a socket up through there. The other one's accessible through the side of the door. You have to pull back the sticker here and here uh, for the top bolt. Once the two bolts for each of the two tracks are pulled out, uh, they just fell down inside the, the door here. It's kind of a big mess. And then the real trick was kind of wiggling and jiggling because it, it's just weird shapes. Um, so trying to get those out was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, even once I got them out, the cable is still connected to the electric motor that normally runs the window up and down. I didn't have a good easy way of getting that off. So I took a moment to pull the motor out. It feels like it's the motor on the back of this. So I'm taking out these three. They found a wiring plug back here on unplugged. There's the motor. Okay, so now at this point I got the, uh, the window parts out of the door. Here's the glass. And then these are the main parts, the, the motor and then the tracks for raising and lowering it. And what I had found is that at the motor here, it looks like this piece of plastic was all part of this and that snapped and that was kind of like weirdly twisted up in there when I first saw it. Um, and then if we look inside at the cable coiled up, it's gonna be a little hard to see on camera. Uh, it's actually like twisted over funny. It's like caught on itself. It would uh, definitely be definitely be a snag so now I think what I have to do is take apart the little winchy bit on the motor and unkink the cable oh yeah it's got some spring-loaded tension to it Okay, so there's the motor. And that's a problem right there. That shouldn't be like that. has jammed up good. The kinked cable and the broken parts showed me that this part really needed to be replaced rather than repaired. So I went online to see what was available for replacements and sure enough Dorman did have some aftermarket parts available. The price actually looked like it was pretty decent and on top of that it's actually supposed to be a better part than what Tesla originally used. So I ordered it but it would take a while to get. In the meantime, I still wanted a window. So I found a piece of plastic that I had that looked like it was just big enough to make a temporary window replacement. I taped it down to my piece of glass and then traced the shape onto the plastic. 
And then the first thing that I did was put the plastic into the window opening. Even though I had already traced out the glass, I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally miss anything. Uh, so for example, I was able to notch out the bottom left corner right away. I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss that and I could just rough it in. Then it was just a matter of cutting the plastic, pretty straightforward, although this was a brittle plastic, so it didn't cut very cleanly. But that was okay, because uh, putting the plastic back into the window area here, um, I'd be using some tape, so any rough edges were going to get covered up anyways. Um, basically, I just used tape. A lot of tape. I don't know, we'll give it a shot. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we're no worse than we were before without a window. But with a temporary window, I didn't have to worry about the weather and I could take the car out for a test drive. And we'll do that in the next video. I hope you enjoy these. Please like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, stay charged up.